a federal judge, a Trump-appointed federal judge, young judge who looks like she's going to have a great career, she just appears to have ended the CDC mask mandate for public transportation. I, it, it, it is spectacular. I, you know, I got to say, I flew this afternoon from Texas to Alabama. I'm pissed. She didn't issue a ruling this morning. <laughs> a few hours I had too to late. Wear the bloody mask flying here. Uh, what I love about that text, so Michael showed me that text right before we walked on, is, is your buddy is a priest. <laughs> so you've yes. literally got a priest on a plane texting you, holy crap, we get to take our masks off. <laughs> he, he actually followed it up. He said, the poor guy next to me is still asleep. Should I just take it off his face? I don't, that way you can breathe just fine. But I'm glad you told him no on that one. <laughs> yeah, that's probably not. But, but this is actually... On the one hand, this is such great news. I'm so excited. I've got a flight coming up on Thursday. I can't wait to exercise my freedom. On the other hand, is this what our country has come to? That we need to celebrate being able to breathe without a muzzle on? I, I mean, think how asinine this is. Two years ago, if someone would have suggested to everyone here that the government's gonna step in and, and make a rule that everyone has to wear a mask every damn moment of the day that you can't get on an airplane that you can't get on a train you can't get in the bus you can't get in an uber without putting on a stupid mask nobody would have believed that yeah i mean it really is an interesting moment you and i were sitting backstage going why are we so damn happy and and to be honest on some level maybe the american people should have said to heck with this and collectively thrown our masks down yeah but the problem is on an airplane, they've got a power imbalance. If, if you did that yesterday and said, to heck with this, I'm not going to wear a mask, they throw you off the plane. Yeah, and they did it to a lot of people. The, the Navy SEAL who killed Osama bin Laden, you think that guy would get a lot of credit in America? He'd be able to do kind of whatever he wants? They, 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 they booted they, him off the plane. I, it is, by the way, killing Osama bin Laden, that's, that's kind of a big deal. <laughs> you would think. Not enough to uh, let you ride mask-free, though. Uh, you know, it, it is not only that, but there was a big push to add to the no-fly list people thrown off planes for not wearing masks. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is a list that's designed for terrorists, for people that are, you know, actually want to hijack planes and fly them into buildings and murder people. We're now going to add the guy who shot Osama bin Laden, yeah. arguably, because if you failed to comply with this mandate, you were going to be banned. And the argument was not even just one airline, because some people say, well, they're a private company. No, what they were urging the federal government to do is make it a no-fly list on any airline yeah. that you were forbidden if you wanted to go to Tuscaloosa to any other place in the United States or across planet Earth you better get a bicycle or a car or a truck or a boat because you weren't going to be able to fly. And, and, and that power imbalance is, is, I think, dangerous. So I'll take the win however we can get it. I think I, I, I don't want to let the perfect get in the way of the good. I don't want to clutch defeat from the jaws of victory like conservatives so often do. You know a fair bit about the law more than I do. What was the argument here from the judge? So the argument, this is a district judge uh, in Florida, federal district judge, and it was a group of plaintiffs who, who brought a lawsuit. Uh, a couple of the plaintiffs, one said, that, said that, that, that they suffered anxiety from wearing a mask, and others said they weren't flying nearly as much because they didn't like wearing a mask, had trouble breathing. And the, the Biden administration defended, and the argument was, does the CDC have the authority to issue this rule? I, I gotta say, every time I was on a plane, I would hear the flight attendant come over, over, over the loudspeaker, and the flight attendant would say, federal law requires you to wear your mask. And I'm sitting there going, wait a second, federal law. I, I seem to recall for something to be federal law, there being something in the Constitution mm -hmm. about it passing the House, passing the Senate, being signed by the president, becoming, well, you know, federal law. If I'm not mistaken, Senator, you are a federal lawmaker, is I, that right? I, I, and if that happened, I kind of missed it. <laughs> because we didn't vote on it. We didn't have any federal law on it. What happened, Joe Biden issued an executive order. He got into the White House, he issued an order that said, I think a mask mandate is a hot diggity damn good idea. Those were his exact words, it, I think, it, right? It, yeah. well, he, invite, he invoked corn pop too. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what it meant. 
Th then he promptly turned to shake the hand of an imaginary rabbit that was next to him. <laughs> as, he does, as he does. By the yeah. way, the imaginary rabbit's right here. Good to see you. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, <laughs> two weeks later, the CDC, the bureaucrats at the CDC put out this new rule, except they said, uh-uh, it's not a rule. Because there's actually a federal law, the Administrative Procedures Act, that says if a federal agency wants to issue a rule, there's a way you issue a rule. And in particular, you put it up for notice and comment. In other words, the agency says, okay, this is a rule we're considering. The American people, you got 30 days to comment on us, to tell us, is it a good idea, is it a bad idea? You've got to weigh the arguments, you've got to weigh the evidence. And, and, and the legal standard is that it can't be arbitrary or capricious. Hmm. And the federal district judge in this case has, has a very reasoned opinion uh, that goes through in detail examining the statutory language. Number one, there's a general statute that deals with health crises. And she says, look, that statute doesn't give these broad powers to impose, whether it's mask mandates or vaccine mandates. Or remember, the government before argued that, that they had the power to impose an eviction moratorium to decree right. if you happen to have a rental house, if you're renting out your garage apartment, you can't collect rent. Why? Because we decree it to be so. Never mind the niceties of, of passing a law subject to democratic accountability. And, and the district judge went through the statutory language. CDC admitted it hadn't done notice and comment. It said, well, it was an emergency. Well, because, because they have the right, according to the Administrative Procedures Act, to say, well, we have good cause yes. uh, to suspend these rules. Because if we didn't suspend the rules, why uh, mayhem would ensue. We, we would not be able to take care of this, this public emergency. Well, and one of the things the district court said is, look, this thing had been going on for over a year. COVID infections were going that down. If it was suddenly this oh so crazy emergency, what happened the prior year? How did you suddenly discover it was an emergency then? Yeah. And, and so this decision, the end of the decision, uh, the district judge vacates the rule.